Welcome to Chapter 3 of STM 4 and R. This is the last of our real review chapters, and the last of the chapters that's explicitly univariate, just one variable. So we're going to be moving fairly quickly through it, though there's some important things, much of which will be review, some might be new. Um, starts off with an example from the uh, earthquake in Japan and the um, wall of water that called, caused the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plants to uh, um, uh, to be destroyed. Um, so we really start with the idea of how do we display data from quantitative variables. And one way of doing this is with a histogram. And again, I think most people have seen uh, that in the past. We'll talk about how to create those in R in a few um, few minutes. Um, we can be thinking about different ways of setting up the uh, the labels um, for this, and also introduce the idea of stem and leaf displays, which are best for data with relatively small number of observations. Here, using data from the pulse rates. Stem and leaf plot. You can see the description here. I'll ask you to create one on the homework. But again, this is a way that can be used to display data, just doing stuff by hand. I've actually published data from a handwritten stem and leaf plot. But for the most part, we're going to be dealing with larger data sets when this is not as useful. Dot plots are another approach that are used, uh, commonly now used in uh, pre-secondary education. Um, again, just wanted to give you some examples of those. Whenever we think about distributions, we're really thinking of a couple things. We're talking about the shape of the distribution. So here we have the idea of a bimodal distribution. Um, some other examples where we think about describing shape. And there's this kind of sidebar here about Toto. I have a feeling I'm not in math class anymore. And the importance of judgment statistics. It really isn't as much of a, a key learning outcome as it is in, in mathematics. So it's useful to be reading. Uh, that as well. Second thing we're thinking about with in terms of distributions is the idea of center because based on the shape we might be summarizing things in different ways. Median people have seen before. You'll also have seen uh, the mean which we'll see in a little bit. But the last idea that's here is the idea of spread. The first and most common measure of range is range, the minimum to the maximum, that distance. Probably not a very good measure. I won't use it very often in the course. Maybe checking on kind of data consistency is the one place. Interquartile range turns out to be much more useful. And what we'll see in a minute, the idea of the standard deviation. So calculating these things, I'm not so worried about getting the exact values right. Um, that's what the software is good at. There are a lot of different ways we can be thinking about things. But we want to quickly get to the point where we can start to summarize things. That's the, the topic of chapter three of section 3.5. This idea of five number summaries. So again, I can urge you to use that because that mm. then lets you uh, generate box plots, which um, will be very useful and extended in the next chapter. So think, uh, show, and tell here in how to kind of look at flight cancellation data from a distribution that we'll find out is very skewed, very useful stuff. And then we can start talking about how we would measure the center of symmetric distributions and the idea of the mean. There are very few formulas in the book. This is one of them, but I think it's one you're already familiar with. Comparison of the mean and the median is important. Again, a review for the most part. What might be new is the idea of the, of the standard deviation as a way of measuring the spread of symmetric distributions. And so that uh, bears close reading and thinking about the idea of variation. We won't be calculating a standard deviation by hand very often. Um, I just want you to know how that's put together. Definitely, as always, encourage you to be reading through and working through the just checking, making sure things are, are set. And then to close, the idea of what to tell people about a quantitative variable. How would you summarize summarize things? And again, it really comes down to this idea of center, spread, and shape. We don't want multiple measures. We don't want redundancy. We want people to kind of be regenerating a picture. Here's an example of that and a step-by-step -step example. And... Uh, um, just again, lots of good examples in here. It's always some things can go wrong. We have to make sure we don't do those things. Most of them are pretty obvious. Uh, the idea of um, checking the bin width. And then finally closing with some of the learning objectives for this material. Again, often a review for many of you of these terms, making sure you're confident and comfortable with those um, fair game for exams and, and other things just to be able to define those. 
This chapter is uh, also straightforward to implement in R. We're using the mosaic package. We read things in. Here we're running the nrow uh, function that tells that there are 1168 tsunamis in these earthquake data. We can generate histograms for those. We can generate stem and leaf plots. Do the same thing for the dot plots. Again, fairly straightforward. There's a number of functions in R, for example, the median function. And the general form of this is we'll say median, tilde, and the name of the variable, comma, and data equals the name of the data set where things have been brought to. Here we're using the filter function to, to filter out the only those tsunamis that are between 1989 and 2013. Actually matches the value in the back of the book. Very useful function we'll be using a lot throughout the semester is this favstats function. So favstats, again, same syntax, tilde magnitude, and then data equals the name of the data set to give us the, uh, the, the actual value. We can generate box and whisker plots. They're pretty boring if you just have a single plot um, and uh, calculate other things like the standard deviation and the median. Those are all, again, all provided by the favstats, which is a simple way to proceed but we can go ahead and, and verify the values from the book. So again, long chapter, lots of stuff, but mostly review. Thanks.